What's going on guys? It's Leishi and welcome back to another review on the channel. Today's review is actually a funny one. I did not know that Kmart Australia sold gaming peripherals and they have a gaming keyboard and a gaming mouse in their collection that I thought it'd be funny to try out and show you guys in a review. They also have a headset, however I don't have the headset today, I've only got the keyboard and the mouse. So I've got them set up behind me and I can't wait to dive in and show you guys about it because it's actually quite funny, like for the price that you pay, it's not bad. Is it an option for me to use on a daily basis? Absolutely not, but I can see some good points in this, so let's check it out. So starting off with the keyboard itself, this is the keyboard here. So it's a full mechanical gaming keyboard. It has blue switches, the caps are removable so you can change them if you want to, and it has 26 anti-ghosting keys, as well as 12 LED modes for the RGB lights. So they're actually trying quite hard, which I find quite hilarious to be honest. However, there are some good points to make about this and some really bad points to make about it as well. So let's start off with the good points. So the first good point is that this is only $39 Australian. It is very, very cheap. And the reason why I think it's good that it's $39 is if you have kids, this is probably going to be a really good option for you because it's cheap. If they break it, so what? You can just go get another one. It isn't fantastic quality. Like you're not going to be paying hundreds of dollars for a Logitech quality. But it's still not bad. So I think for $39, you can't go wrong. It does what it says it's supposed to do. It lights up, it works. So for kids, I think it's a fantastic buy. If you are someone who games really, really casually and you don't care what kind of keyboard you use, again, for $39, it's a good buy. It's fully mechanical, so you're gonna get a fast response you hope so anyway, but at least you've got that aspect to it. There are only the really good points that I can make about this, to be honest. I have used it and I find it to be really uncomfortable to use. So this is it here. The reason I find it really uncomfortable is because it is so cheap and lightweight, just cheap plastic. You can just, just by sliding your hand across it, you can feel how cheap it is. The keys have a slight curve in them as well, so I don't think you're going to be able to see. I find my finger slips off them and I knock the keys next to it, which is not a fun experience to me. They don't have any grip on them. I think it's just, if your hands are sweaty, your fingers are going to slide off these. And the font that they have used on the keyboard as well is really ugly. I, yeah, look, I'm not really a fan. I just think, you know, you are getting what you pay for, to be honest. It's a cheap make. It's just average plastic. If you're not too fussed about that, then good, you can buy this. But for me, it's definitely not something that I could see myself playing games with. The good thing is, it is mechanical. You can hear it, it's fully mechanical. It's not horrible in regards to response of a click, but again, you're getting what you pay for. It is only cheap, you need to remember that. It doesn't look bad. You can see they've gone for the RGB effect. There are 12 modes as well. So if you press this little button down here, which does have a little light symbol on it, a little globe, it cycles through effects. So apparently there's 12 of them. I'll just shuffle through them now for you. Some of them are quite ugly. Like I couldn't see myself playing games with this effect on. I find it to be very, very in your face and overpowering. I'm someone who prefers like a, a subtle kind of pulse, not pulse, a flowing wave of colors. So see how that's pulsing across. If it was slower and the full keyboard lighting up, to me that's a little bit more nicer. Yeah, I think it's just, it's very, very novelty. So now we're back to the start. However, the fact that they have included 12 presets of lighting effects just shows that they're actually trying, so I can commend Kmart for that. Soon in this video, I'll do a comparison between my Logitech G Pro X keyboard and this keyboard so you can see the difference. It's gonna be pretty major, um, but yeah, we can look at the both of them together and see the quality. This thing is really ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is so ugly. I don't know what they've done with this little 
gem logo. It looks like I'm a Crash Bandicoot or Spyro the Dragon mouse. I don't even know. But they say this is an RGB mouse. It only flicks through red and then purple and blue. So it's not really much. It does have a DPI button on the top of it. So there's four different presets that you can flick through to change the speed of your cursor. So I guess that's handy in a way, but in my opinion, you can't really see the difference between each four presets. So again, kind of useless. It's extremely lightweight. Like there is nothing to it. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing when it comes to mice, but it all depends on the plastic. This feels really weird so you've got a really rough feeling plastic on the thumb rest but on top of the mouse it's all smooth plastic like i just kind of feel like if it was one nice check texture that would be grippy i think that'd be better when i click the buttons it feels like a slow response nothing compared to like my logitech mouse or my razor mouse this feels like i need to have a lot of pressure to click you do have three buttons on the inside as well, so two of them are arrows and one looks like, I don't know what that's supposed to be. It's got a target on there as if you're trying to shoot, so I don't know if you can set that function to maybe a shooting button in-game, I don't know, but it looks extremely novelty. Um, and then you've got this ribbed cord, so... I mean, this is only $19, so it is extremely cheap. It's a mouse, it does what it's supposed to. However, for gaming, I do not think this is going to be your friend at all. It might be okay for little kids. Again, someone who's just getting started on PC. But to me, like this is something I could just probably like throw in the bin and not care about. So here is my Logitech G Pro X keyboard. This keyboard is incredible. So you can already see the difference in quality by looking at it. This looks so much more streamlined and sleek. It's a lot more clickier, so much more faster in response time. It feels better on the fingers. This is a true mechanical keyboard in my opinion. Would make sense, they're quite expensive. So comparing the pair, this does have a little tiny bit of a dip in the keys, but it's not as much as the Kmart keyboard. My finger still feels quite flat on this key. I have a good grip. The plastic feels nice on my fingers. It grips my finger. The font is so much nicer on here. I just think that if you're really wanting to invest in a good keyboard for PC games, you have to spend the money. You have to be willing to spend the money because I haven't had the Kmart keyboard long enough to know how long it would last, but I know the Logitech keyboards have lasted me forever. So I am pretty biased though because I do love the brand. However, you can just feel the difference in quality. I'll, I'll have some B-roll of them close up, but yeah, like even in weight, the Logitech keyboard feels a lot more heavier and sturdier than what this feels. I feel like if I if I threw this, it would just break. <laughs> I'm not going to throw a keyboard, but it's just so thin and lightweight that I feel like it would just snap. The difference with this keyboard is it is 10 keyless, so it doesn't have the number pad. But at the same time, I don't think that's a bad thing. If you like having a number pad, the Kmart keyboard would be perfect then because it's got that. But for me, I prefer the 10 keyless at the moment. They're smaller, they fit on the desk nicer, and yeah, I, this is just what I'm used to at the moment. Going into vlog mode, you could hear the difference then between the keys. The Kmart one sounds so much more louder than what the Logitech one does. They are both clicky mechanical keyboards, but you can hear the difference in sound. I'll show you again. So what I'm finding as I'm playing through Portal, which I've actually never played before, go figure. Um, I'm finding that the buttons are quite high, so as I'm moving through with WASD, I feel like they're so high that I'm struggling to move down around them. It's just a personal thing that I'm noticing, but yeah, so far it's not really any good for me. So overall, would I recommend this to you guys? Yes and no. Again, if you're on a really, really tight budget and you do not want to spend money on expensive peripherals, 
This might get you started. You would need to have a play around with it first, get a feel for it, especially the mouse. If you want something that's going to be your best friend in FPS games on PC, I don't think that's going to work for you. However, the keyboard you might be able to get away with. I know a lot of people who play games with cheap keyboards and at the end of the day, it's the player. If you can perfect using a certain peripheral, you're going to do it well anyway. So I don't think the keyboard's a bad buy, but the mouse, in my opinion, it definitely is. On the other hand, like I said earlier, this would be perfect for kids. It's going to get them used to using those, these kind of peripherals. Hopefully it teaches them to look after their things as well because I don't know about you when I worked in a gaming store Kids would come in with broken tech broken controllers all that stuff all the time because they don't know how to look after their things And parents are spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on them So for a cheaper alternative you're gonna spend $60 to get a keyboard and a mouse for your kid compared to maybe $300 if you were to go expensive This might be a good start what I have noticed as well is that these are selling out. So I had to purchase them online because in store I couldn't find them. The keyboard sold out a few times. I have to wait for a restock. The mouse I could purchase straight away, but yeah, the keyboard I had to really go on the hunt for. So it looks like it's quite popular. Like I said, there is a headset as well. So if you guys do want me to try out the headset and let you know what that's like, let me know down below in the comments. But at this point in time, if no one says they want me to test it, I don't think I'm going to because just it doesn't interest me. I have so many good headsets and I'm going to be getting more good headsets and I don't really want to waste my money. So I'll only check it out if you guys want me to review it for you. So that concludes the video guys. I hope you enjoyed this kind of review. I had fun doing it because it's not often that you can go to a cheaper department store and pick up some gaming peripherals. So I would love to be on the hunt for some cheaper brands and review them for you guys. If you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn the bell on to have your notifications on. That way you are notified when I post a video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.